Hey, I'm Patrick. Today, we're gonna walk through a full buff and polish job on a car that was painted in a mechanic's garage 30 years ago. Ready? Let's boogie. Now, I imagine a lot of you are afraid of doing this job at home. We've all heard horror stories about damaging the paint, etc. Stuff that can't be reversed. I assure you, these HexLogic pads are not as abrasive as, say, a 3M wool pad. Now, these are outstanding, but definitely not for novices. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of these pads. And what it'll help do is minimize any possible damage to the paint that you can do. You still have to exercise caution. But at the same time, these are much, much more forgiving than a 3M wool pad. Now, maintaining the looks of a black car is a full-time job. You're going to see every single swirl, every single mistake anybody else ever made with the car. I think this car is a terrific testbed for using these HexLogic pads. It was painted in the 90s in a mechanic's garage. He did a decent job for the tools that he had at his disposal. And then it was left in storage for over 20 years before I bought it. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. I had budgeted for body restoration and getting rid of these terrible rims, but unfortunately that budget got eaten up elsewhere. So the fact that this car was not professionally painted is going to help illustrate how safe it is to use these HexLogic pads and how you're going to minimize any likelihood of damaging the paint as long as you follow a few simple steps and use the correct products. So what we're going to do today is we're going to wash the car, we're going to clay the car, we're going to use a product to remove any excess wax or paint sealant that we had on the car, we're going to buff the car, and then we're going to polish the car, and then we're going to put a paint sealant on the car. This is the ultimate protection and gives you a fantastic look, particularly on your black car. This video is not sponsored by any of these brands. It would simply be remiss of me not to talk about their application and how much I love each and every one of them. Brand loyalty often has its place. Use whatever wash you want as long as it comes from a reputable company. Another thing about Meguiar's is its availability and its price point. Save yourself some cash and use Meguiar's clay. All pads in this video are HexLogic pads from Chemical Guys. This product is considered a mild polish with fillers to the tune of 1.4 microns. It is not designed to remove scratches or swirls. It's designed to remove old product, and this is my purpose for using it. Wolfgang product. What more needs to be said outside of its reasonable price point and Uber's ability to remove 1,200 grit sanding marks? You want to save a few bucks? Meguiar's Ultimate Compound will work well too. Same as above. It's rated at removing 2,500 grit sanding scratches built to achieve your final gloss. Don't forget a 10 to 1 water alcohol mix to help you remove some of this product. A polymer sealant that bonds to the paint and clear coat of your car. You'll notice the quality of this product the first, second, and third time you wash your car after you've applied it. Coolest product on my shelf. Soak your pads in a bucket of Dawn for a couple hours and then follow up with the Chemical Guys pad cleaner. Give them a scrub, wring them out, and you're done. Remember to protect your lungs and your eyes if you don't have adequate ventilation. I'm performing this operation in an open garage with running fans, so for convenience, I won't be using all of this. However, I will be protecting my ears as to not make my tinnitus worse than it already is. I call it The Bitch. The name is inspired by Alonzo's shotgun in Training Day and also because it's pink. Auto Geek was liquidating the pink flexes, so I got a great deal on it on sale. She operates at 10.9 amps and weighs in at 5.7 pounds. This is one of those purchases that I thought twice about at the time as to whether or not I really needed it. But I'm thrilled I bought it when I did, no regrets. French may be the language of love, but German is the language of anger. She's an angry bitch. One of the most underrated, half-assed, and overlooked parts of this process. What constitutes a dirty car? The minute your car leaves your garage, it's dirty. Now, cleaning your wheels is a completely separate science that I'll show you in another video. Today, we're gonna focus on the car itself. Think of your soap as more of a rinse. Get as much dirt off as you can with just the rinse. You'll see the two coats of paint sealant I applied two years earlier is still holding up. Wonderful product. I've got a few wash rules that I strictly abide by. First and foremost, never ever take a rag to a dirty car. And that includes using any type of spray wax or quick detailer on a car that you have not washed. Do you own a California duster? Throw it out. 
All you're doing is trapping contaminants and rubbing it directly into your paint. Always keep two sets of microfiber towels and mitts separate from one another in both their clean bin and their dirty bin to minimize any cross-contamination between both sets. I would also wash them separately in your washing machine as well. Suds are your friend. Got a foamer? Use it. When you're washing the car, when you're drying the car, there is no reason to put any undue pressure directly onto the paint of a car. Do you think that microfiber can't scratch a car? Think again. Always use two buckets when you're washing your car. You've got one for the wheels, and you've got one for the car itself. The last thing you want to do is rub any brake dust or other abrasives from your wheels directly into the paint of this car. Be attentive to any foreign objects that might be attached to your mitt. Flip it and give it a rinse when needed. Spray the car off, get it out of the sunlight as soon as you can to prevent water spots. I've been persecuted for using these automotive squeegees, but I've never had a problem in all the years I've used them. The nice thing about these things is you don't rip through 20 microfiber towels just drying the car off. When it does come time to dry it off, fold your microfiber towel once or twice and lightly dry off the car. I use a leaf blower on my rims, but it concerns me to use it on the paint of the car. And remember, your car is dirty the minute you pull outside your garage. You cannot clay without lubricant. This is your clay. This is your lubricant. I've used soapy water in a pinch, just taking some car wash and shaking it up in a bottle and spraying it. But really, this stuff is cheap and it works the best. Now, what you're going to want to do with your clay is you're going to want to take it out. Make sure your hands are clean. Take a chunk of it like this. Put this somewhere safe where it's not going to get dirty. You're going to knead it in your hands until it's flat. If you drop it, game over. Get fresh clay. If you're having somebody help you, pay attention to them because sometimes we'll drop it and they feel bad and they'll pick it up, knead it, and keep using it. Don't let them do it. The minute you drop it, it's going to pick up any contaminants from the ground and put them on the car. That's the last thing you want. In fact, I recommend you look at everything before you touch the car with it, whether it's a mitt, if it's in your garage, it could get bugs, it could get large pieces of dust, and you're gonna rub that directly into your car. When you're dealing with a car that was painted like this, the paint is extremely soft. I've noticed it with pretty much all Toyota paint and a lot of modern Honda paint in particular. You need to be really, really careful what you're touching the car with. So once you have your clay and your lubricant, give it a spray and just rub lightly until it rubs smooth. This really shouldn't take all that long. The more you do this, the more you're gonna realize every car is unique in its problem areas, but there seems to be one that they all have in common. Definitely on the top of the rear bumper, it always seems to collect and really etch into the paint. All the cars that I've ever clayed always accumulate the most grit back here. This portion of the panel is already running smooth, so I'm done. Now you're gonna be doing the car in sections. Make sure you take a look at the clay every time you change sections. You'll get an idea of what kind of contaminants you're pulling out. And what you'll do is you'll take it, you'll twist it, and you're good to go. Remember, don't overthink it. It's really not that difficult, but it's totally worth it. In addition, we're gonna be running a lot of abrasive processes on this paint, and we wanna make sure that every last contaminant that we can get is pulled out at least by the means of what we have available to us. I always try my best to go in the aerodynamic direction of the car, but I don't think it matters all that much with this. Now, you may be wondering, Patrick, which specific parts of the car should I be claying? When people ask me, what specifically do I clay? My answer is everything. Plastic, steel, glass, everything. So I'm gonna get busy. Quick thing to note, every time I use the bitch, I make sure I take off the backing plate and apply some air tool oil to the felt lining around the inside of it. This is a recommended maintenance item from Flex. Again, I do it every single time I use it. This product was added to my arsenal as an experiment and has since become a staple. For this, I'm going to be using our blue pad, which is the soft polish pad. The red or black pad would work fine with this as well. 
prime your pad and then add three beads of product to it. Some might call it overkill, but I think it's ideal for removing any wax or sealant products previously applied. Remember, all we're doing is spreading this product, that's it. So a two speed is fine and no need for any real pressure either. Plus, one bottle goes a long way. You don't have to go excessive on this product and believe me, I am the guy that uses way too much product, particularly when it comes to paint sealants and waxes. But this one, as long as it stays moist, you're good to go. Let it dry until it's tacky, that's what it reads in the bottle, and then give it a wipe off with a dry microfiber towel. That's really all you have to do. It's a bit hard to get off, so feel free to use your 10 to 1 water alcohol spray to assist. So put the cord over your shoulder, put the pad to the car, get started, and use the locking mechanism to hold down the button. It's a lifesaver. At this speed, the bitch is not very unwieldy. Remember, you don't need to apply much pressure at this stage. Let the bitch and the product do the work. Just glide it along the car. Later on when we're buffing, we're gonna be doing sections, but with this, we're gonna be doing the whole car. If you've never used a flex or an orbital buffer before, this is gonna be a terrific break-in on getting a feel for the tool. You're gonna to develop your own tactics and tricks. Lots of times when I first put product onto the pad, I like to give it a little dab, a little bit of a wipe so it doesn't sling everywhere. So now that you're done with the application, wait about 20 minutes and it's time to get the product off the car. Fold your microfiber towel twice, flip it every few passes. If your microfiber towels are new, make sure you get the tags off and make sure that they've been washed first. Those tags will scrape up your car. Keep an eye on the corners of the towel. You will probably need between six and eight towels to get this product off the car. Also, remember what I said about a 10 to one water alcohol mix in a spray bottle. It'll come in handy when getting this off. Now for the fun part, buffing. Buffing a car reminds me of when the dentist scrapes at your teeth underneath your gums. And if you're a masochist like me, you love it. I'm going to be using the orange pad, and you can also use the yellow pad for a touch more abrasion. Don't be afraid of either, they're still far from using a wool pad. Prime your pad and just like before, add your three beads to it. Set your speed to two and spread the product into two by two sections. This will help you define your work area. I typically don't find this necessary with hex pads versus wool pads, so I won't be doing it. But this is recommended by the manufacturer and recommended for beginners. For buffing, you want to set your speed between four and six. I'm setting the bitch to six. You only live once. Bring the pain. So again, I recommend you spread your product with a speed of two, just like you did with the paint cleanser in a two foot by two Two foot section. My pad is saturated, so I'm just going to dab the product into my section. Showing you how to perform passes by example isn't the clearest way to see it, so I'm going to pull out the trusty 3D paint app in Windows and show you how. A pass is defined as covering your two foot by two foot section one full time. You do this with a large overlapping horizontal S. When you've completed the section, you've completed the pass. The next pass is done with a vertical S overlapping the horizontal S you just completed. You'll do this a total of four to six times. In this example, I'm doing it six times. Press firmly and travel approximately approximately one foot every four seconds. I'm going to be going a little bit faster than this since my car wasn't clear coated. See the graphic? Nice and clear. I've never used this Uber compound before. I've always used their scratch and swirl remover. The Uber compound is capable of removing 1200 grit sanding marks versus the scratch scratch. Shit. Oh, that's a Scratch Swirl Remover's 2000, so understandably, I've been jonesing to use this product. Press firmly on your passes, and remember, don't overthink this. It's not as difficult, and since we're using hex pads, it's reasonably safe. And use your 10 to 1 water alcohol spray to assist in wiping this down. Keep in mind, both sides of this hood are clean, real clean, but the driver's side might give you a new idea as to what clean actually is. And we're not even done yet. We're gonna be concentrating 
on this section right here, not the hood. I just wanted to unload some product and I'll do that next. I'm telling you, the yellow and the orange pads are outstanding pads as far as not being too abrasive. If there was ever gonna be any paint that would get damaged from this process, it would be this paint. And as you can see, I just did, I think, four passes on this fender, and I was even directly on the edge, and I got exactly the results that I was looking for. If I wanted to go a little bit deeper, I could use a wool pad, but to be honest with you, I'm fine with this for now, and I don't, I don't think I'm ever gonna take a wool pad to this car ever again. Let's finish up the rest of the hood. One specific word of warning. Remember to be real careful on your edges, right? My fake Ram Air here makes things a little bit difficult. Use your judgment and never ever do that, ever. The pros have these little compact buffers for getting into tough places. They're excellent. I've only got one and that's the bitch, so I make do. I do have some drill attachments, but I'm uncomfortable using them on paint as opposed to, say, powder-coated wheels. So I'll give her a little hand buff in these places. You can use Meguiar's Scratch X or just the compound that you're using. Just dab some on a microfiber towel and rub the tough area that you want to reach. Don't push too hard because microfiber will scratch paint. If you're pressed for time, you're welcome to skip this step. Hell, in my case, with paint like this that was never clear coated, it may be placebo. But personally, I believe heavy abrasives should be followed up with lighter abrasives. Would you sand a piece of wood with 400 grit paper only to not follow up with super fine paper? Personal preference. So get your medium or your soft polish pad ready, prime it, and add your three dots. We're going to be using a six speed for this, and I also recommend using a two speed to spread across your two by two section. Apply this almost the exact same way that you buffed your car. Four to six passes, or until it's nearly clear with moderate pressure. I'm not pushing as hard as my fake Ram Air would lead you to believe. It can take it. This stuff clears up a bit more than the Uber product, but you can still use your 10 to 1 water alcohol to help clean it off. If you skip this step, but still do everything else in this video, your car's gonna look great. You're in the home stretch and you're at the easiest step. This will give a solid layer of protection and add a look of depth to your paint. It's unbelievable what accumulates on your car in just a matter of about an hour and a half. I stepped away to eat. Before we get started with the paint sealant, what I'd like to do is take my 10 to 1 water alcohol spray and a microfiber towel, walk around the car and just make sure there aren't any spots that I missed and didn't get any of the prior product that I've been using all day off of the car. You've got insect shit, you've got dust, everything else that just settles. You want it to be as stripped down and bare bones as possible. Plus, we have a train that comes by here constantly. It shakes everything, lo and behold. Of course, when you take off the paint sealant, you just want to use your towel. You do not want to use this because that defeats the purpose. So, let's get busy. Normally, I use a black pad for this, but my black pad is toast, so I'm gonna use the red one. Now, a little bit of this stuff goes a long way, but I always overdo it. It tends to get a little bit thinner over time. This one is a little bit old, so let's take a look at it on the microfiber before I just go, uh, yeah, that's good to go. All you're doing is spreading this product over the entire car, letting the car sit for an hour or more, and then it brushes off like a fine powder. Spread it with your finger, just like the others. So prime your pad, and remember, a little goes a long way. Three dots. Believe me, I am the guy that uses way too much product, particularly when it comes to paint sealants and waxes. That was a lot. Those three dabs were quite a bit. <laughs> no shit. We're setting it. Two. You don't have to apply much pressure, just glide the bitch. Paint sealants are interesting. A lot of people think that they don't add the same glow as wax. In a lot of ways, they're right. 
Paint sealants are for protection and, in my opinion, depth. Keep in mind, this is a polymer sealant. You might have trouble with certain waxes bonding to it. I've found that P21S with the blue lid, it's a beeswax carnauba mix, bonds perfectly to this paint seal and adds that last bit of glow. So wait a few days, wash your car with a soft soap, and then apply your wax. Now we wait, watch the car turn white. Storm's coming. you enjoyed this video I hope maybe you got something out of it with regards to how to properly maintain the exterior of the car my guess is there's probably some things that I did that you don't necessarily agree with leave them in the comments below I think it's a terrific discussion until then my best to you and to those who are important to you there's gonna be more videos like this to come so you know what to do and take care